Straight ahead on WBKB News at 11 next month, Michigan residents and non-residents can fish without a license. Find out about the ice fishing tournament being held in Alpena as part of Free Fishing Weekend. Plus, today was Elimination Day 2 for the Major League Fishing Series, featuring a few of our local lakes. See where viewers gather to watch. And 30 people were honored tonight for taking control of their health. See whose story was most inspirational. We'll have those stories plus your local weather and sports. WBKB News at 11 starts now. From Rogers City to Tawa City and all points in between, this is Northeast Michigan's award-winning news team. Your source for news, weather, and sports. We are WBKB News at 11. State Representative Peter Patalia of Presqu'ile has been selected as a Michigan representative for the Great Lakes Legislative Caucus. Good evening, I'm Ashley Reed. The group of lawmakers from eight U.S. states and two Canadian provinces focuses on Great Lakes protection and restoration issues. Patalia quotes, Lake Huron is critical to the economy and lifestyle in our local communities and the Great Lakes to Michigan as a whole. So it's a real honor and opportunity to be able to serve state residents in this capacity. The caucus's three primary goals are to exchange ideas and information on key Great Lake issues, strengthen the role of state and provincial legislators in the policy making progress, and promote the restoration and protection of the Great Lakes. As you can tell, the lakes here are important and the Department of Natural Resources is inviting everyone to take advantage of Michigan's annual free fishing weekend. On February 15th and 16th, Michigan residents and non-residents can fish without a license. And to encourage involvement, there will be an ice fishing tournament in Alpena. The sixth annual Real Fun Ice Fishing Tournament will be held on Grand Lake on February 15th. There are 1,000 tickets available in over 1,200 holes that will be drilled on the lake prior to the tournament. Gates will open at 9 a.m. for people to choose their hole, and from noon to 3, everyone will fish. There will also be food and vendors throughout the day. And it just gets people to go out there and enjoy it with their family. It's going to be a lot of, you know, a lot of adults will go and fish, but they, you know, they don't bring their kids. They don't bring their wife or your lady to there. They don't go as a family, and I think when you have free fishing, it's the one time that you can do it as a family without having to buy a license to find out you won't use it again. Prizes will be determined by fish weight and time registered. This year's first place winner will get a new John Deere Gator. In addition the to the tournament, there will be a real fun festivus for the community at the Aplex the night before. The party will include cocktails, a pasta bar, raffles, and a DJ. All money raised will go to benefit the River Center, whose mission is to build a healthier Thunder Bay habitat and promote stewardship through environmental education and research. For more information about the tournament or for ticket information, just visit www.icefishingalpena.com. And speaking of fishing, the 2014 Major League Fishing Series filmed in Alpena continue today on the Outdoor Channel. Today was Elimination, elimination Day 2 as bass anglers compete to win the General Tire Summit Cup. The series features Northeast Michigan's own Hubbard Lake, Grand Lake, and Long Lake. Latitudes Tavern and Fletcher Street Brewing Company are serving as official viewing parties every Saturday as each new episode airs. Latitudes has been raffling off gift certificates from Jimmy John's and Fresh Palette during commercial breaks. Last week they had a mad rush of about 60 people for the premiere and today people continued to pile in. It's a good reminder that we do have some really, really good bass fishing in this area. Um, something that these professional bass fishermen are finding out, you know, this last summer. So to see that on national TV, it's a good reminder that we, we do have that asset uh, for, for recreation. And I think that's something that being on the national stage like this, being on national TV, uh, could even bring in some tourist dollars. A new episode will air every Saturday from 3 to 4. There will be an official viewing party for the championship episode February 8th at Northern Lights Arena. Throughout the year, Bay Athletic Club in Alpena has shared inspiring 60 seconds of inspiration stories. And tonight was a celebration for those who have taken control of their health. Tonight was the fifth annual fitness-inspired gala held at Art in the Loft. This year's theme, Stories of Triumph. There were 30 success stories honored tonight and about 130 people in attendance. We realize that people are inspired by other people's stories. So we created an event annually where we can share the triumph in people's stories and let them get up and share how they've shed weight, how they've shed insecurity, how they found strength, new friends, new health, 
and it's just a night to just celebrate taking control of your health. Amanda Freeland and her husband were part of a 60 Seconds of Inspiration story three years ago, both of them losing more than 30 pounds. Freeland is now a fitness instructor at Bay Athletic Club. We just ended up happier, healthier, our relationship got better, and so we were asked to be a 60 Second Inspiration story, and we were so honored, and it just felt amazing to be included in the community, and we ended up meeting so many people because of that. Tonight, the audience voted for who they thought had the most inspiring story in 2013. That honor was awarded to Maya Weinman, who has lost more than 180 pounds in less than two years. She won $500 in BAC bucks and a new Under Armour jacket. A new comedy has come to Alpena Civic Theater, and the director says it will keep you laughing. Things My Mother Taught is about a young couple who runs into all kinds of roadblocks as they try to move into their new Chicago apartment together. The show is written by Catherine DeSavino. I'm sorry. So far, it's been a fantastic opening. I'd love to see 150, but you know, <laughs> with the weather the way it's been, we've got to understand. So. This is a tough time of year to do a show. Alpena Civic Theater has been around since 1955. It is run by a group of volunteers interested in giving their time to put on shows for the local audiences. Culture and the arts are, are beneficial for any community, and the fact that all of our actors are local actors, they're non-paid, they're volunteer, um, everybody gets involved. Show times are Thursdays through Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m. Things My Mother Taught will continue running through January 19th. Tickets can be purchased through the Alpena Civic Theater box office. Well, coming up next on WBKB News at 11, a Michigan rap group is suing the U.S. Justice Department. The group says their fans were depicted as a dangerous gang. Plus, U.S. workers are staying at the same job longer than they used to. Those statistics after the break. Thanks for joining us. In state news, the Insane Clown Posse rap group is suing the U.S. Justice Department over a 2011 FBI report that depicts the rap metal's duo's devoted fans, the Juggalos, as a dangerous gang. The American Civil Liberties Union filed the lawsuit Wednesday in Detroit Federal Court on behalf of the group's two members, Joseph Bruce or Violent J and Joseph Utzler or Shaggy Too Dope. In this country, we have the right to listen to the music we want and associate with fellow fans without being subjected to harassment or criminal profiling. Three times police have stopped me on the street and asked me questions about my shirt, my tattoos, and what being a juggalo meant. The police kept saying that my tattoos and shirt meant I was a gang member, even though I told them I was just a music fan and that juggalos weren't a gang. It also names four fans as plaintiffs. In your money watch, contrary to popular belief, U.S. workers are staying at the same job longer than they did in the 1980s. According to new labor statistics, U.S. workers remained at the same job for 4.6 years as of 2012. That's compared with three and a half years in 1983. The trend appears to hold up across all ages and genders. Experts say the numbers suggest American workers are stuck in a rut and staying in their jobs longer rather than looking for new job opportunities. Big banks are set to report quarterly or earnings this week. We'll hear from J.P. Morgan Chase Tuesday, along with Wells Fargo. J.P. Morgan has recently agreed to pay a total of about $20 billion to settle several federal investigations, including a probe relating to the Bernard Madoff scandal. And on Wall Street, stocks took a disappointing unemployment report in stride Friday. The Dow slipped about 8 points, but the Nasdaq climbed 18. GasBuddy.com and AAA of Michigan put together local and state gas prices. The highest price for gas in Alpena is coming in at $3.35 at Opeaches, down 7 cents from last week's last weekend's high. The lowest is $3.32 at Admiral. Highs and lows across Michigan pretty similar to last weekend's. The highest gas price is $3.79. That's in Canton. And the lowest price is coming in at $3.05 again in Detroit. There's still much more to come on WBKB News at 11. Jeff Cole will be in with a look at sports and some warmer temperatures, but with those temperatures came rain and then ice. I'll let you know if those temperatures are here to stay this week. Stay tuned for your weather forecast. 
Welcome back. It's time now for a look at our weather forecast. Today, the high was 39 degrees. The low was 33 degrees. Normal high for this day, 27 degrees. Normal low is 12 degrees, so we were quite a bit warmer than normal. Record high for January 11th, 50 degrees. That was back in 2012. Record low, 20 below, back in 1984. Sunrise this morning around 8:11 and sunset this evening around 5:14. Taking a look at the current conditions here in Alpena, currently 32 degrees, west winds around 12 miles per hour, making it really feel like 21 degrees outside. And we are having an issue, it looks like, with our satellite and radar, so we'll go ahead and move into tonight. As you know, most as of most of you know, if you went outside at all today, we got a lot of rain that turned into ice and then some snow showers too. That wintry mix is going to continue into tonight. A chance of snow and some freezing rain before 1 a.m. Low of 25 degrees, west winds around 15 miles per hour. And then into tomorrow, mostly sunny, 36 degrees for our high west winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. And moving into tomorrow night, a chance of rain and snow. This is after 1 a.m., however, 30 degrees for our low south winds around 15 miles per hour and taking a look at the week ahead in our extended weather forecast for Monday we have a chance of rain and snow showers before 1 p.m. then that turning into snow showers high of 34 low of 14 warm temperatures kind of continuing throughout the week I don't know if I should say warm but obviously warmer than we've seen recently Wednesday we'll see some sun partly sunny 20 degrees for our high 11 degrees for our low back up to 33 degrees Thursday and then Friday will drop to a high of 18 degrees and a low of 8 degrees and now it's time for today's photo of the day. Today's photo was sent in by Jan Herring. She took this photo earlier this week on North Partridge Point Road in Alpena. She says as the sun was getting low in the sky, the trees were glowing gold. How beautiful. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. Thank you, Jan, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo you would like to send us, just email a photo along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. In your health watch, a new report shows most doctors never discuss alcohol use with their patients. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says at least 38 million Americans drink too much alcohol. And while most are not alcoholics, excessive drinking can cause health and social problems. There are several different patterns of problem drinking. One is binge drinking. A second is heavy drinking throughout the week, averaging more than two uh, per day for men, more than one per day for women. Researchers say screening and counseling can reduce a binge drinker's consumption as much as 25%. Another CDC report shows cases of lung cancer dropped between 2005 and 2009. The rate fell more rapidly for men than women. The American Lung Association says the figures prove tobacco control efforts are working. And an experimental device is showing promise for sleep apnea. The implantable device called Inspire provides a mild electronic stimulation to the patient's upper airway during sleep to help prevent the tongue from collapsing and blocking the airway. Researchers say a year after the device was implanted, patients experienced fewer interruptions during their sleep. In national news, more bad news for West Virginia residents. It could be several more days before they have clean water. CBS's Alexa Christophorus has the latest on the chemical spill. As West Virginia's governor handed out bottles of water, thirsty residents learned they're not out of the woods yet. The water is still not safe to use and may be too dangerous to drink for several more days. This is a large system and it requires a significant amount of testing and sampling to ensure that we get the data that's needed for those experts to then to be able to make a decision. Laboratory testing has found the water in nine West Virginia counties with nearly 300,000 people is still not safe. The danger began Thursday in a storage unit at the Freedom Industries plant. A chemical used to process coal leaked into the Elk River about a mile upstream from the state's largest water treatment plant. The spill forced residents to scramble for everything from drinking water to a clean shower. Some motels like this American American Inn have fresh water and are helping out. I called ahead and they weren't busy and uh, we worked today and got pretty dirty and, and so I came on down and, and they were very, very uh, helpful. Residents will have to find ways to cope for a few more days before the dangerous chemical is flushed from the Elk River and the water is clean enough to use again. Alexis Christophorus, CBS News.
The chemical is not considered deadly, but exposure can cause skin irritation, rashes, and vomiting. Sports is coming up next, but first, Jeff Kolb is here with a preview of what's ahead. Jeff? Ace, king, queen, how about a pair of jacks? Well, I've got two ACC highlights coming up, plus a big league scout getting some work in with the Tawas baseball squad. That story coming up straight ahead here on WBKB. Coming into today, the ACC men's and women's basketball teams were winless in conference. But with Kirtland in town, the Jacks were hoping to heat up and have the Firebirds go ice cold. Park Arena was packed tonight. We start with the women, and the Jacks were zipping the rock all over the place in the second half. Sandy Bischoff nailing the jumper in the corner. ACC up 47-39. Then it's Ashley Monticello. Money from behind the arc. Jack's up by 11. So where is Kirtland? Well, Joe Hamlin hits the three, but the issue for the Firebirds, they only have five players in uniform. So the Jacks, they just keep on running. Bischoff and Megan Barkley perfecting the give and go as ACC notches conference win number one, 59 to 44. Former Mayo Thunderbolt Micah Tommy and the Firebirds hoping to spoil the late game for the Jacks. First half, Trayvon Howard driving and then getting the acrobatic finish. ACC leading 36-27. Firebirds heat up in the second though. Jeremiah Williams with the putback right there. Kirtland now down by four, but Alpina with some wide open looks. Logan Wickert, ta, ta, today, Junior. Jacks on top 50 to 45. Then Steven Shepard right here. You're gonna see him get the low hook in the post as the men take care of business, business as well. 99. To 89. Down at the Breslin Center, Michigan State facing Minnesota. No Adrian Payne today with an injury. Enter Kenny Kaminsky, the freshman, hitting from downtown five times. Sparty on top by one, but the Golden Gophers making several comebacks today, including DeAndre Matthews' layup to send this one to OT, but it was all state from there. Gary Harris, the transition jam, and then Denzel Valentine is going to get a bucket right here. Spartans, they outscore the Golden Gophers 16-4 in overtime, winning 87-75. To the NBA, Brandon Jennings and the Pistons facing the surprising Suns, and it would be a historic first half for BJ. The steal right here, followed by the dime to Josh Smith. He'd head to the locker room with 16 assists. That's right, 16, tying Isaiah Thomas for the most in a first half. Detroit up 13 at intermission, but the Suns would come right back. Josh Smith sending Gerald Green to the line on that foul for three shots. He'd hit them all, and the game is tied up at 108. But what Smith giveth, he taketh back, hitting the game winner. Detroit surviving this one, 110-108. If you were out and about this morning like me, getting around felt like being on an ice rink, didn't it? At least the Alpena Wildcats were on the right kind of ice up in the Sioux, though, but not getting the right result, losing 4-1 to the Sioux. Jared Plume scoring Alpina's only goal, and Jesse Ballor making 30 saves as the Wildcats come home with a weekend split. Also, the Street Cats falling today to the Hounds, 3-2. After last night's 6-0 loss to the Hounds, Vladimir Makrusov and Savelli Skurikin scoring for Alpina, which did lead 2-1, heading to the third. Meanwhile, out in L.A., the Red Wings meeting up with the Kings. First period, L.A. with a 5-on-3, Drew Doughty. Smoking the puck into the net. Kings strike first, but Detroit striking back. Thomas Tatar throwing the puck on net. Then Riley Sheehan finished right there to tie things up. But this game still in progress. It's hard to believe with days like today, but baseball season isn't so far away. And the Tawas Braves spent seven hours practicing today with a very special guest on hand. Hey, now that, that, that's... That's the adjustment I want. I think you should make. It's definitely not baseball weather, but for serious ball players, the season is always around the corner. That's the case in Tawas, where the baseball team has been working hard this off season. But unlike most days, today the Braves got some big league critique with New York Yankee scout Chris Newell at work doing what he does best. Seeing the little intricacies of certain things that kids struggle with and how they make the adjustments, what makes kids tick, uh, what wins ball games. And being a scout, we're trying to get guys to the next level who can, who can do the little things to help us win games. 
And for Tawa seniors hoping their careers continue after high school, those little things mean everything. Their window is very small, you know, moving on to play in college. And if we can supply one little thing for them to get better at, that might be the difference between them this spring having an opportunity to play in college next year or not. Before today, Braves senior Justin Karinovic didn't think he stood a chance at college ball. That was before Newell adjusted his mechanics and his confidence. I hit a few too many pop-ups, I feel. Uh, those are way too easy outs. Better on the ground than in the air, and uh, just the few things I've changed here have really helped that dramatically. Talking about what the college life is like for baseball, it's, it's definitely becoming a possibility. College ball seemed well within reach for David Brown after hitting well over 500 his first two years for the Braves, but an arm injury wiped out his junior season. Today, he took some big steps with Newell to regain that old form. It felt good. <laughs> right away, that felt good. And just what I did before was a little bit like that, so it really felt good that I'm starting to do it again. What a great opportunity. How did they end up getting him to come to Tawas? Well, actually, one of his former Little League coaches is a teacher at Tawas, so that's kind of how the connection oh. happened. And he also says that uh, he's going to come back before the season starts in a couple of months to Very cool. meet with some more players. So what a great opportunity for all the kids there. It sounds yeah. like that he definitely made some adjustments that will help him in the future. Yeah. So It was too bad that you know more kids couldn't get out today with the yeah. weather, but he'll be back. So Oh, good. Well, coming up next on WBKB News at 11, this city, Bill Out of Ice is sure to make you ooh and ah, And people are traveling from all over to check it out. Welcome back. If there's one thing that attracts oohs and ahs, it's ice sculptures. Ice fans are gravitating to what's considered to be one of the world's most renowned ice and snow festivals. CBS's Seth Doan takes a look. There's no thaw here. At least that's what organizers are hoping. Harbin is called the Ice City, and for good reason. Every year, for 30 years now, it's hosted an ice festival, making the most of its bitter Siberian temperatures by building a mini city out of ice. American Michael Morgan lives in South Korea and flew to China just for this. It's really cool to see everything made of ice. We were walking on the river today, and you can see them pulling out the, the giant blocks. The frozen solid Sunghua River provides the essential ingredient. There's plenty of it. It's minus 11 Fahrenheit today, which is about average, but that does not stop visitors. More than a million people are expected to turn out to see the spectacle. That's absolutely amazing. Kristen Ng and Alex Clark are two of them. The replica of the Colosseum is just amazing. I was in Rome earlier this year, and it's almost better than <laughs> the actual Colosseum in Rome. Don't say that. The <laughs> Italians will kill you. <laughs> 7,000 people worked to put this together, using enough ice and snow to fill nearly 200 Boeing 747 cargo planes. There are ice slides, ice temples, and even an ice Empire State Building. If you tire from seeing too much of it, mom can just drag you home. Wait, so that, that wasn't Alpina? I don't know. I think it could have been Alpina today, yeah. except not, not the, the impressive ice no, here in Alpina. That was magnificent. Thing. I don't know how they do that. Yeah, some very cool structures there, the, the Rome one and all those. And the lighting makes it look even more fabulous. And the horse, too, making it out there on the ice. So. Uh -huh. Uh-huh, and I think, I think I'd have to go on the slider. If I was there, I would. I would agree with that. I would do that too. <laughs> Looks like a fun time. And this ice festival, it begins on January 5th. The end date isn't so certain. Pretty much, whenever the weather gets warmer, the whole city just melts away. So, so pray fact. for cold weather for that. Yeah. Then, I guess. So. <laughs> and remember, you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on more news items online. Just visit wbkb11.com for sports weather and news updates anytime, day or night. Or add us on Facebook at facebook.com. WBKBTV. That's all we have for you tonight. Be sure to tune in again tomorrow night at 11. Jeff will have all of your updates from the world of sports, and I'll be back with your nightly news. Have a great night.